Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my first short backgammon lesson. Uh, thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to look at whether to make a single or double hit in the opening game, and more importantly, the rationale behind the right decision. So let's get started. Now here, Green has won the opening roll of a 4-1, split the back men, brought one down from the mid, and White in return has a 4-1, how would you play it and why would you make that play? So here the correct move is making the double hit as white. So well done if you've got it correct. However, I would like to know why you made this decision. So rather than making moves passively over the board, I want you to develop a new way of thinking a way of having a conscious understanding of every action you take over the board and how that is the right decision for logical reasons. So here, at first we might think playing to the ace point is bad. We're burying a checker. We don't really want it on the ace point. Green might hit us back. However, here the advantages simply outweigh the disadvantages. By making the double hit, we're taking all momentum away from green. As white, we have great potential. Even if in the worst case scenario, green were to hit us back with an ace, we would have no problem entering green's home board. 35 rolls get us back in. And also aces are duplicated. So the ace that, ne that green needs to hit us is also the ace that green needs to make the five points and to make the bar point. And green would love to unstack that six point with the five checkers on. What else can we see over the board to help guide our decision and to embed a more conscious understanding? Well, we can see that green has a blot in the outfield. So next roll, if we make the double hit, green will most likely play both those checkers back into our home board. And we as white will then be on roll to pick up the green checker on the nine point to develop our home board by making the five point or the four point by bringing checkers down from the mid. There's many good opportunities. If we play the narrative forward, as Ziska shows in his recent book, The Ziska Method, we can see that by making a double hit, it puts us in a much more advantageous position. Even if Green did not have the blot in the outfield, you can see that on the bottom right picture, it would still be too good not to make the uh, the ace. So making the double hit, even without the blot in the outfield, is still the right decision. It just takes momentum completely away from green. It enables us to take command of the game and then be in a very strong position. Even if green hits us, as I said, so what? Take the risk and grab the reward. Let's have a look at another position. So here, Green has won the opening roll of 3-2, plays one down and split the back checkers, and we as White have a 2-3 to play. What would you play and why would you make that decision? Now here, the right decision is not to make the double hit, but simply to hit one checker and then to play one down. So why, ask yourself, is it correct to, to hit once and not to hit twice? Now here, we need to kind of, again, fast forward and think what would happen if we hit twice? And what would happen if we hit once? Now, by hitting loose on the four point, we're starting a point we ourselves want to make. So we know that the four point is the second strongest point on the board. The best one is a five, 
then it's a four, then it's a bar point. But so by by hitting loose on the four point, we're giving ourselves an opportunity to make that four point on a subsequent roll. At the same time, Green wants to make a four point. He split the back checkers. Why? Because he's trying to get an advanced anchor. Now, if Green succeeds in in obtaining that advanced anchor on our four point, we're going to have some problems later in the game. We're not going to be able to blitz Green. It's going to be more difficult to prime Green. So two of our game plans have effectively gone out of the window. So in the opening game, one of the key strategic points is to fight for the key points on the board, the five point and the four point. So here we hit once and we prepare ourselves for making that on a future roll. If we look at the comparison here between the best move in the top left and the bottom, uh, which is uh, the worst move there, we can see that it follows McGreal's maxim that you put your checkers where they belong. We hit loose on the four point because we want to make the four point. That's why we do it. By going to the ace point in the bottom right, it just looks like a worse position. It doesn't look like we would win as much. Another feature of the best play is that it duplicates fours and sixes on both sides of a board. We can see that if green hits with a four, then he can't use the four to slot the, the bar point. If green wants to hit us with a four six, he can't then use a six to bring one down from the mid or to start to make the five point. So again, we're looking how numbers are duplicated on both sides of the board to guide our decision. Now, what would you do in this instance where the five point is made? Here, would you make the single hit or would you make the double hit as white? So here, the correct move is to hit loose on the four and play one down. Again, we should remember the maxim from before that put your checkers where they belong. We want to make the four point. We don't want green to make the four point. We're going to knock him off the four point and hopefully make it ourselves next time. If there's no threat, we have a stronger home board. If green hits us back, we come back in with 35 rolls. If we succeed, we have a hugely advantageous position. By making the double hit to the ace, we're not even leaving ourselves a direct cover. Only sevens or some doubles would cover the ace. So again, it's usually incorrect to hit on the ace with no direct covering number. So here the single hit is right. We can see that playing 2-3 or playing 4-3, in both cases, the double hit is a significant blunder. So we must hit once and prepare that to make a point on a subsequent roll. If we consider another variation, when we have the rack made, which is a four, five and six point, as Roberti described it. Here, if we have an opportunity, it's much better to make the double hit, simply because we have a much stronger board. Even without the direct cover in the top left picture, we can see that it's still the, the best move by some margin. With three points closed, green only has nine rolls to get back into the board. So here it's a big swing. So we should make the double hit. What would happen here if white rolled 3-1? 
what would you do in that position? So if white were to roll a 3-1, then your experience of the previous positions should tell you to hit loose with a 3 from 6 to 3 and then split the back checkers. Again, it's a point we want to make. We want to play pure, make the points in order, and we don't want green having that advanced anchor. Even if white only had two checkers rather than three on the eight point, it would still be correct to hit loose on the three point because we have the rack and it's just too strong. And it's a preventative measure against green making that anchor. So again, think forward, think what's likely to happen and how you're moving towards the win. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that in those two positions I just showed you, which are now there to see, is it's actually a double pass before the roll. It's white is in a threatening position, white has a stronger home board and white is ahead in the race. This is a money game, but it's a double pass. And again, we can look at variations on this position. And by comparing, we can evaluate. And evaluating just means seeing a value in different positions. And by doing that, we can begin to gain a deeper and more conscious understanding of how to play and how to identify the right move. So here, if green had the five points made as well, this would be a big no double for white if we made that variation. So there you can see the value of the best point to have. If green's four point was made, the second best point, then that would be a borderline no double, double take for, for white. And if green's three point was made, was made, that would be a big double take. So we can play around with these positions on XG, we can decide on different cube actions, and then we can use this as a reference over the board. And backgammon is just a game of pattern recognition, and you build up a visual map of different references, and you begin to see these when you're playing a match. Now, I hope you found this useful. I will leave you with one piece of advice is that always consider the second best move and evaluate the two moves and decide out of those two moves, the first move you found and the second move, which move is best and why. You can do this with something really straightforward. So you could pick a 4-2 or a 3-1, which you would always make a 5-point and a 4-point and you can ask yourself, why is it that I'm making a five point or the four point? If I didn't do that move, what other move would I do? And why is that second move worse than the first move? And by asking yourself those questions, you're gaining a deeper understanding. You're not just making the five point because you read it in a book or your friend told you to do it or you, you read it on a forum. You're doing it because you know the alternatives which you've played out just aren't as effective. They are not moving you into a winning position. So you can find me on Galaxy and Heroes. Uh, my tag is Shinobi. And also uh, I keep a blog on Backgammon. Um, I hope you enjoyed my first video. Please leave any comments. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, happy rolling.